Okay, everyone, welcome to the Thursday, July 13th uh, work session and public hearing of the Penfield Planning Board. Allison, would you please call the roll? Mr. Hetsky? Here. Bastian? Here. Knauer? Here. Tidings? Here. Burton? Here. Nursinger? Here. Valentine? Here. Sangster? Here. Weitzer? Here. All right, thank you. Uh, we have minutes from June 20th. Uh, hopefully everybody got a chance to review those and if anyone has any comments or questions, otherwise entertain a motion to approve those. Move to approve. Okay, pass. Should be a second? Second. Petsky? Here, um, yes. Aye. Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burden? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? I was on my game. I'm putting the suit, but it's really not true. It's all for show. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jack, you want to take over? Sure. Why not? All right, so our one table application continues to have no action on it, no updates right now. So I'll propose that we'll take no action as we have done in the past few meetings. If everyone's all right with that, once we find something out, we'll let you know. Okay, good. Thank you. Good. All right. So, that concludes our table applications. Moving on, we do have a guest on the agenda, and I would like to queue up the conversation um, on behalf of the guest, and if the board does have questions, they're in the audience this evening. It's uh, Mr. John Reichart. He's here on behalf of his property, 1205 Shoecraft Road. Doug's pulling up on the map now. Uh, what do you like to do when he's come to the board just to um, ask the board's opinion recommendation about moving forward with this proposal to subdivide a portion of this property. It's a total of 19.89 acres right now currently, and he'd like to subdivide one acre um, off of the property for future construction of a single family home uh, for his son. Um, the timeline of that is still to be determined. However, to get things in place, he's looking to create at least a lot um, in the near future. So he's getting ready to prepare an application, wanting to get the board's thoughts originally. We do um, have... How much frontage do we have there? We do have a map that he provided with rough estimates of the counts. Doug, could you pull up... sixty remaining. Yeah. Doug, could you pull up his um, map that was submitted from the files, please? Do we have it in there? New business, it's in there. Thank you. All right, so this is a little difficult to see, but this is actually two pieces of paper, one on top of the other, um, where he has drawn in, on both situations, the proposed uh, new lot. You can see an arrow drawn to it on the left, and kind of an overlay of what Doug's hovering over right now on the existing parcel. Um, so laid the out. existing parcel yes. goes much further to the left on that piece of paper. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the second piece of paper uh, kind of is, is taped over and was scanned like that. Um, so again, the proposed lot is this one acre flag oriented lot. Um, the flag actually leads to town owned property. Uh, it's used basically as a drainage facility for the most part. Mark, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, it's the stormwater facility for green pine. Why do we need a flag then? Yeah, can they access an ocean craft? I mean, it's not oh, a park, it's right. town on land, but it's not a park facility. Basically, it's a drainage way on that area, and that's something that staff brought up, was the question of the need Why would he need for the flag or the access to that. Access to that. Yep. Um, and I'm sure Zach's going to highlight it. There's also uh, currently a barn on that piece of the property. Um, Go ahead, you're running with it. <laughs> Zach's going to highlight it. Um, you know, obviously, it's a, it would be a pre-existing non-conforming use because there's no primary use without the barn, but the barn exists, which is fine. Once you carve it off, um, we require a barn to be on a five acre parcel. So if it was to be carved off, there'd have to be some caveat in there that the barn would need to be taken down before <coughs> the house was built. Mm -hmm. um, I know we also have done other things that you know, we've taken a, you know, a letter of credit to, you know, or a uh, stipend to make sure that that's removed because otherwise we'll be basically creating even more out of compliance barn on less than five acres. You could also make that lot bigger and make it five acres. Or you could make it bigger than five mm -hmm. acres if you wanted to keep the barn with the house, build the house and have that, 
you know, married with it or something or, or part of that. So. Mark, is the barn, is the barn, um, like is the property, I know that they, they kind of changed the code to make it kind of a sliding scale as far as size of those type of structures. So that barn is of a size that it would need a five acre for sure. Um, it looks pretty small. It's, it's like on a 25 property, most so, I mean, roughly 25 by 20, you're talking 500, 500 square, square feet. feet. So you would need at least a, basically the new code is 1% of the lot area. So a minimum of 196 square feet. Um, so one acre lot, you could have a you know maximum 196 square foot okay. barn. And then a two acre, you could have 200 square feet. Three acre, you could have 300 square feet. So it's, it's not super far off. It's 50 square feet off, right? No, he would only have a maximum of 190 square yeah. six square foot of a yeah. barn. It's, I'm sorry, it's fire. He's doing no, he so, yeah. okay. so he would need to have five acres to okay. have a barn of that size. I just, or, yeah. or I, want, I want to clarify that just in case there was some more. What, what's his intention? Does he want to, to retain the barn? or? According to our conversation, uh, and again, he's here in the audience if the board wants to ask the question of him, uh, it was to uh, remove the barn because that's the preferred area to construct the home. Cool. Oh, all right, so it's a moot point. Yeah. But I'd say there's a timing issue in there is if we create the lot without the barn gone, you're creating the non-conforming lot with a barn on it, and then what's the hook to make sure that the barn comes down later on? Could it be, make it a condition, right? Condition. Well, condition, but if and it's a condition, but a condition doesn't... He, he would file a plat and have to create the lot, and then the condition, I mean, normally you'd have a condition of like a CFO or something. Right. We just got to make sure there's a hook that you know, he says, yep, right, or and, credit or something. And I say we'd have to do something to make sure that some form of assurance. Once it's done, the yeah. lot's created that within a year the barn is down and you know the town has the money to remove the barn if need be or some something. But obviously he's got to go through his iterations, but that's just some of the, the PRC <coughs> comments concerns are is you know, how do we make sure that you know, once the lot's created What's his impetus to come back to this board for anything else? So the question, and if, if the board has any questions, jump out. But uh, the ultimate question here is: Is the board comfortable, or have any recommendations for Mr. Reichart uh, uh, in, prep, in preparing uh, an application for a subdivision application, or would the board rather see it as a um, subdivision site plan, kind of knowing that the house would be on there? With a location to it, what would the board's recommendation be um, for the applicant as they attempt to prepare this? I think the, the simple thing is just to do a, a subdivision approval. You say whether or not we want to bring it before the public hearing. Yeah, I mean, we, well, we have to. Right. We would. We would. It's just, are there any recommend? Like, for instance, the orientation of the lot. Does the board have any additional thoughts on that? I don't, see, that I, I don't see the need for the flag. I don't know why that's there. Like, right. We the staff did feel this. We we had the same thought. I briefly spoke about it with Mr. Reichardt when he, he visited the staff as well. Um, that you know maybe in a better maybe better for the lot just to mirror what's already there um, to the north and mm -hmm. create a one acre lot with all its property situated in one rectangle. Um, yeah. Well, how does parcel A drain? right now. Can you pull up Topo on that? Uh, it all pretty much drains towards the rear. Um, it heads west from there and then kind of north going towards so, the pond. So creating that flag has the potential to create a, a disagreement right? over drainage across somebody else's property. I don't follow. If something were to be constructed on that flag on somehow, flag. or some improvement was done there, where people typically, you know, dig or excavate or fill wide. on their site, to say, "Oh, yeah. I want to make this less wet." Fifteen yeah. feet. What do you have? A one lane driveway, stone dust trail, or something. Yeah. I mean, it's not. You know, it is town property. It's not a park. It's not. You know, the intent is not for hiking and walking. It's just a stormwater facility area. The pond is kind of on the upper left, but it kind of is a, a low wet area that kind of. Right. Um, the, those backyards from Green Pine drain towards that, and it all kind of drains to the west, um, and ultimately, again, continues to head west, uh, further west from there. And so I guess we might want to consider um, discouraging 
the applicant from having the flag unless there's some compelling reason to have it there. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, and as I told them, it, it's completely up to them if they want to propose it that way. Uh, the board can still come we'll back and issue those same. Exactly. The board can review it that way and make comments at the time. Um, yep. So the direction I'm hearing is, yeah. with all these things said, submit a preliminary final application for a subdivision application, and we'll review sure. it as mm -hmm. such. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Um, sure. I thought it would be very advantageous to be able to have good drainage over to that major creek. It's not shown there, but it runs from east to west, carrying water back to the pond, the green pine. So I thought it would be good to have access. Well, there's the, you, you guys have got a fabulous system here. I congratulate you. It'd be nice to be able to have access to that creek. It's shown in blue. And so you're uh, thinking that the the flag portion of the proposed lot would provide would almost good drainage. Create a swell or something yes. on there, and uh, that would drain over to. I can't believe these that creek. <laughs> that was the int primary intention. Oh. Okay. Mr. Nursing okay, there just... kind of pointed out that maybe. You wouldn't approve it, but like that's what I would like to do. And I'd be very agreeable to uh, an agreement that nothing would be built. If something's, when something's built there, the barn would be gone. There's just no room to put a, a home there with that barn sitting right in the middle of the parcel. Okay. Uh, I open these files. Okay. Okay. So is it Thanks. go with that direction? We'll work with you to submit a preliminary final application. Um, we'll correspond through emails and phone calls to get an application for the board. Um, you just got to prepare the necessary mapping and forms, and you can eventually schedule a public hearing. Okay, thank you. You, you understand that the concern with the barn is uh, some sort of <laughs> defined time period that... Um, by creating a non-conforming parcel with the barn, since the barn needs five acres, uh, the concern in the discussion was more about just some sort of indefinite period of time that, well, the barn would stay there forever. And that's what we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So that's, that's what that discussion and concern was about. Would you be so. more agreeable if the barn were on five acres? Absolutely. The, Yes. Yeah. Then it would comply. Then, then it would, would comply. comply. Yeah. Yeah, because with this, we're creating a non complying. You already have a complying parcel, and you want to split it up into a parcel that's not complying. And so, if, if we're going to go about doing that, we might as well not have any zoning laws <laughs> if we create non complying lots. So, could you uh, get your approval, get your map? And then there's nothing that requires you. That there's no other way to make you take the barn down until you come back to do something. So the concern is that they don't want to create a non-conforming lot and then have the barn still be there. Yeah, for yeah. forever. Or well, for, you, sell, you would sell off the barn, you sell off the main acreage, and then now you don't have the ability to either make the lot bigger or remove right. the barn. Somebody else buys the barn and says, no, I just want it as a barn. It already exists. Right. Um, is that barn even worth saving? Yes. Um, okay. Well, if you're it's amenable a good to having a five acre lot. Say again? If you're amenable to having a five acre lot, then that's the easy way out. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, although you're not approving it, you'd probably you would be favorable if it were just approved with a five acre lot. Okay. There's the barn. Where's the barn? Oh, okay. It's okay. a good building. It's got vinyl yeah. siding on it. Two-story. Oh, yeah. yeah, it looks like a nice building. Okay, what time frame would you... I realize you don't want to commit yourself, but what kind of time frame would you be thinking about if we if were you to proceed to remove ahead? the barn? How long would the, I have to do something with that barn? I understand you don't want it there for 30 years. 
In the past, we've done it at the time of construction of the home, of the single family home that's proposed that you're thinking about building there or your son's thinking about building there. The barn would come down first, the house would get built. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Great system. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. We, have, oh, we got plenty of time. We do have one new business item that came in this afternoon from the building department. Um, it's a quick review of a renovation that's taking place at the Courtyard Marriott um, near 441 off Panorama. Okay, so um, we just recently uploaded the materials. <coughs> Doug's going to pull up some of the elevations and uh, renderings that we have from them. Uh, basically, they're their building firm is being reviewed right now for interior and exterior renovations. Um, we wanted to bring it before the board this evening uh, just to get your thoughts and opinions on the proposed renovations on the outside in terms of color samples and building materials. Uh, here's the rendering that they're proposing. We do have elevation drawings that identify uh, the material types as well, um, specific to color and type. One. Probably going to be in the plans folder, Doug. Some of those West elevations. South elevations. Some of those elevations. Have, there's yeah, keynotes and legends for the material types. Much of it is the EFIS. Um, they're bringing in some old stone material on the side, but it's kind of an, looked like an, it just came up today in the, in the building department. Um, they're reviewing the internal renovations, but how uh, this board has reviewed the exterior before, um, we thought at least if the board had mm -hmm. a, a look at it, if you're not comfortable with it, you know, this evening that's fine, but this was, otherwise it this puts was it, a landmark building the, when they put that up. Puts, this, it a, puts it a month this out. This was the prototype for precast um, Marriott and Microtel hotels. And, okay. and they developed the precast model right here at their factory in East hmm. Rochester. Nice. So we have some other photos that kind of show that outside. But if you look, there's kind of some stone on that lower area that they're bringing in some gray okay. stone. It looks like stone to a water table and yeah. stone column wraps. They're changing the, the roof from a brown uh, shingle to a black shingle. Uh, they have some more, basically some more grays. Uh, updating the look. Browns, updating mm -hmm. the look to it. There is no physical change to the outside as far as an expansion, uh, change in scale. Obviously, that would come to the board for as a as a public hearing application. Uh, but just updating mostly the colors on it. There's some site photos. I think mm -hmm. took pictures in there as well. That, that shows the the covered entry. You can see it's more of you know tans and. Yeah. and Yellow, yellow, those browns. It's still got that same water table look with the with the brown. Um, you know, so the physical features of the building are can change just mostly the colors and some of the materials. You can tell he's a millennial. You can't absorb it that quick. Come on, get your eyes. Watching just it. say, just say, pause. The music video or something. <laughs> so, I mean, staff took a quick look at it. You know, we thought it was a nice update to it. Um, just wanted to get it in front of the board and see what your thoughts were on it. Um, just something to be captured. Obviously, otherwise, it's a month before the board meets again. If, if you're amenable to Looks rendering these two, yeah. it's fine to me. Yeah. Okay, we'll just capture in the minutes the board's like, supportive of the, uh, the renovations and the elevations <laughs> that were presented. And then we'll move forward with the building permit uh, review that's going on right now. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right, looks like we got about 10 minutes. Anything else? No other business right now. All right, we will recess for uh, a short period of time. Meet back up at 7 o'clock for the public hearing. And welcome to the July 13th, 2017 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. I'd like to begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. We have four items on our agenda. The way our process works is uh, the uh, applicant will present their case or their idea to the planning board. The planning board members will ask questions, and once that's over with, we open up for public comments, and we encourage uh, all of you or any of you to uh, uh, come up to the podium and uh, uh, give us your opinion on, on the uh, proposed action. One thing that we will ask is that if you have comments, address them to the planning board. Um, when you're called up, uh, please state your name and address for the record, and then uh, tell us what you think. So with that, Zach, please read the first item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Application number one, sketch plan application. Marathon Engineering, 39 Cascade Drive, Rochester, New York, 14614. On behalf of Eric Graff, request an informal discussion before the board with plans to construct a new child care facility with associated site improvements on a total of 3.31 acres located at 1280 Creek Street and 85 Sovereign Drive. The properties are now formally owned by Retlaw Rexed Incorporated and zoned LB and GB. Application number 17P-0018, SBL numbers 093.15-1-2.115 and 093.15-1-2.116. Okay. There it is. All yours, Eric. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Eric Schaff, Marathon Engineering, representing Eric Graff who is hoping to build a, uh, a new daycare in the town of Penfield. Uh, we have submitted some revised plans electronically uh, via staff. What I'd like to do is submit one for the file and give you each a copy of that handout. Full size, thank you. Much more readable, 11, 17 inch, which for the purposes thank of you. tonight should be enough. And I have a total of six. You can use one of these. We can share with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Zach, do I have these from the other day? Mm, no. All right. Okay. You want? We have a copy if you'd like. And I'll be back up in a moment to talk about the uh, major revisions to the site plan. At this point, I'd like to have Eric Graff, uh, the owner-operator of Kintopia, uh, introduce himself and explain a bit about the operation. Okay. Good evening. My name is Eric Graff. I'm at 90 Coventry Ridge, Pittsburgh, New York, 14534. Uh, I come before you um, as a current uh, business operator. I uh, own a daycare on the west side of town that has a capacity of 174 children. I'm very interested in coming over to Penfield on the east side, do something a little bit more intimate uh, in size at 126 children capacity that is a little bit more modern and state-of-the-art that uh, keeps up with the current trends uh, in the daycare industry. If you don't mind me interrupting, where on the west side is your current? It's in Greece. Okay. okay. Uh, the location we chose is going to be a 10,500 square foot building, which meets the uh, standards of OCFS. So, uh, that's basically the, at least the minimum size that we can do. We've also included uh, outdoor play, obviously, uh, an indoor gymnasium, and potentially a splash pad. So child and family services requires 10,500 square feet? It requires 35 square feet per child. Well, that's actually the state's density for daycare, 35 square feet per child. So. If you look at the 135 children that's on the original application, that amounts to about 4,700 square feet. So um, one of the questions that we, we hope you're gonna answer tonight is um, why you need 10,500 square feet. The, the rooms themselves have to be 35 square foot per child. So that the rooms themselves are dictated by the state. And then obviously we have to have hallways, bathrooms, offices, things like that. Uh, I think one of the things that makes the building a little bit larger is the indoor gymnasium. 
we do have a limited play space outdoors and with the weather that we have in New York, it makes sense to have something indoors uh, for gross motor play. Okay, thank you. Okay. Other questions? Oh, all right, so you're, I didn't know if you were done with the <coughs> presentation or not. Uh, okay. Yeah. Can you tell us what the uh, <coughs> covered sloped structures are and what they're, Four that uh, are along the <clears throat> south, south side? side of the wall. Uh, I can defer you to the architect, Alan, who's here with me to answer some of those architectural questions. Okay. Alan? Do you want to save the architectural part for later in the presentation? Or would you like well, is the presentation over with and it's question time, or is it? Uh, is there more on your end to talk about site plan, uh, circulation, things like that? Yeah, I, I can spend just a few moments. Again, this sure. is a sketch plan, so yep. let me just give a, a, a high level overview. Yeah, and just um, to uh, remind the, or to inform the audience, a sketch plan is not an official application. It's more of a concept plan uh, that is uh, um, brought to the board so that they don't have to invest uh, full engineering dollars into an application until they have some feedback from the town and from the planning board. So that's why there may not be all the details that you may expect or that you would expect from an actual application. Yes, when we come back, uh hopefully shortly after getting a good response from you folks. Um, obviously, it'll be more than a one-page plan, and uh, there'll be a lot more detail. Um, we have done some work, and that's why we um, submitted a revised plan earlier this week. Uh, the original application was a 12,000 square foot building. Um, after doing some more work, and uh, Alan can speak more to that in terms of program development and needs and that type of thing, uh, we've come up with a 10,500 square foot building that is on that plan. Um, with an additional play area, there's also uh, parking spaces uh, as shown. What we have are two entrances um, onto Penn Webb Park and one onto Sovereign Drive. Uh, we have reached out um, and had some discussions with the school district in terms of uh, the busing and the drop-offs. And again, we'll flesh out those details and go into more uh, information at the prelim final, but this does seem to work um, that uh, we did not receive any significant issues or concerns raised uh, in that discussion. Uh, being the nature of the location, there are utilities available, um, so we'll be able to, uh, to get water and sanitary, electric gas, that type of thing to the building. Uh, there is a stormwater management facility that serves um, some adjacent properties as well that's located at the end of our property. That's where the stormwater will be discharged to. And preliminary estimates are um, <clears throat> that it'll work as we go through and progress the design, obviously we'll be doing the formal calculations and they will be submitted to the town engineer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have um, done a little bit of a preliminary grading. There is a, a degree of slope across the site. So the revised plan that you have uh, includes a retaining wall, uh, which we determined would be necessary uh, around the parking area and that type of thing. Um, as Eric Graff indicated, there's a play area and there's a provision, uh, at least at this point in the design, uh, for a splash pad. Um, so there's indoor as well as outdoor play areas. Let's see, in terms of sketch, uh, the, we've identified um, a couple of three variant or three variances at this point. Uh, one is the building size. Uh, town code limits it to 8,000 mm -hmm. um, or 135. Uh, programmatically, we will be serving 126 students and, and associated staff, um, and we've come up with a 10,500 square foot building. That'll be one variance. Uh, given the nature of the lot that we're surrounded on three sides, if you will, by streets, um, Creek Street and Peb Webb being dedicated streets, Sovereign Drive, a private drive, but we are forced to comply with two front setbacks off of both um, Penn Webb as well as Creek Street. We'll be requesting a variance for a front setback from Penn Webb of about 39 feet compared to the required 80. And that's just due to the uh, configuration. We've got this um, narrow. narrow 
rectangular site. It makes sense to put the <coughs> building in this orientation. So we've complied with the 80-foot uh, setback from Creek, which is the more heavily traveled and, uh, mm -hmm. and visible street, if you will. Uh, but that means we need a, a setback from PenWeb. And then we'll be asking for a variance uh, for uh, two fewer parking spaces than the calc as calculated by code. And we'll be making that submission. Um, those are all the high points, I believe, uh, at least for a sketch plan. Um, and we'd be happy to address any site issues, but I'd like to do after, I'll address the site issue and then I'll have Alan come up and we'll talk a little bit about the architecture and uh, how it fits and that type of thing. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about um, traffic um, during that critical time in the morning when the parents are dropping off children and that critical time in the afternoon when they're picking them up. Um, have you considered a drop-off lane, a dedicated drop-off lane that uh, is separate and apart from the normal flow of traffic? Um, um, not well, well, two things, sir. Um, not so, there isn't exactly enough room for a, a dedicated drop-off lane. There, um, the anticipated traffic circulation is going to be, you'll, you'll enter, if you will, at the driveway uh, ingress-egress point uh, further to the east and then drop off, exiting from the right side of a bus or the right side of a car uh, and entering the daycare. And, and then you can exit out onto uh, PenWeb. Uh, we have reached out to a traffic consultant and we'll be providing the uh, appropriate documentation. Uh, the preliminary indications that we've received um, from SRF, I might as well tell you who it is, they're very well known, um, give them a plug, um, <laughs> that uh, there is not uh, any justification slash basis slash need uh, for a, uh, a traffic study. The anticipated uh, volume uh, will not cause uh, that degree of interference. And uh, again, we'll- I'd be interested in, in, in knowing what the traffic counts are at his existing facility, which seemingly would be a good example of how many parents are dropping off children um, and have to get out of the car and get their children out and get their their backpacks and their things and, and other yeah, people are, are waiting hours and queuing counts. in line. And, right. and you know, that, that would be a telling sign. As you know, this is a congested area. And one of the things that, that the town has going is a, uh, a uh, improvement project going on at <coughs> Baytown Plaza, um, which has not yet reached full absorption. So it hasn't really realized the amount of traffic impact that it will at some point in the future, along with numerous other improvements going on in that corridor. So, you know, we just want to make sure that this isn't going to create a problem, um, particularly when you know, people are busy and you got a lot of kids in the back of the cars and... Right. No, I, I think that that would not be a problem to have that additional data when we come in for prelim final. And that's one of the reasons we reached out to SRF to see if there was a need for a full traffic study, which takes a little uh, additional time. Yeah. And uh, again, that indication is that, that it's not. But I, I agree with your suggestion that uh, some real life data, uh, if you will, from other operations, we can, we can obtain that and, and have that as part of our next. He, he knows somebody. Yeah. Um, and and uh, along with that, we're talking about parking is event overflow. Um, other facilities that we, we have in town um, tend to end up having events at different points in time, you know, award ceremonies and little performing arts and things like that where um, there isn't often adequate parking for the parents and grandparents that want to come and see the, the toddlers. So um, I understand that you have a, a plan and we'd, we'd like to get that on the record tonight as well. I will let Mr. Graham address that. Sure. So I, first off, to address the issue with uh, number of cars and, and traffic and uh, peak hours, um, looking at the existing operation, uh, peak hours or drop-off hours, I should say, are between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. So during that two-hour time, that's when kids are, are getting dropped off. Once 9 o'clock hits, it's done. And then uh, draw, uh, pickup times, uh, range between three o'clock and five o'clock. So those are kind of the two blocks where we're gonna get the most traffic. So with 126 mm -hmm. potential customers or families, about half of those are gonna be parents with multiple children. So you're looking at about half of that actually of, of cars coming in for traffic with traffic. 
So you take that number, so roughly 50, 60 cars in the morning over the span of two hours is what we're looking at with, with the traffic patterns. And how, how late is your facility open? Right now we're planning on 6.30 p.m. close, but we're gonna adjust that earlier if uh, the demand isn't there for the later hour. So outside of those two time ranges, is there a, a time frame during the day that, um, I guess my question is, do kids come from school, after school, younger kids? So would there, I think I heard buses, there would be buses maybe at the end of the school day? Correct, so we will offer a before and after school program. So parents could drop their children off in the morning the bus will come there in the morning to pick them up and take them to school mm -hmm. and then bring them back to the daycare to um, and drop them off. So that would be, uh, pickup would be whatever time uh, school buses typically run in the area. So between <coughs> 8, 8.30, and then drop off to the daycare would be around 3, 3.30. Okay, and then for, for districts that have, for instance, half day kindergarten, would there be a, a noon time uh, around noon? Yeah, with that, um, we've never addressed that before. So um, we would, uh, yeah, I guess that, that hasn't occurred with us before because where we are, it's full day kindergarten. So okay. we I'm not sure in the districts that this facility would be <clears throat> probably Webster Penfield, you know, if it's all day or not, I'm not sure. Right. Uh, the other question was about events. So where are we gonna put the overflow for events? We really have, two types of events. One, to advertise the center, so where we invite new families to come in. Open house. Kind of. Open, exactly. Uh, we would, um, we're gonna work with the existing businesses on Sovereign Drive to let us use their parking after 5 p.m. Um, and then the other types of events would be graduations, uh, dance shows, things like that. And what we'll do with those is we're gonna host those at the public schools because they get they get out of hand because everyone invites their parents, grandparents, things like that. So we would have so limited- So you wouldn't be hosting those at this facility? Pardon me? You wouldn't- Correct, correct. It would be outside the facility. Thank you. Can um, I ask about the, well, b before you leave, uh, back to the traffic and p drop off and pick up if the peak times are 7 to 9 a.m., I'm assuming that it's probably really kicks into gear around 7.30. People need to be at work at 8 most of the... And if you said that half, roughly half, are parents with multiple children, brings it down to maybe 90 cars. If you have 126 kids there, 60 of them have more than one kid, Right. Right. Six, so uh, we're looking at maybe what would you say, sixty cars between seven twenty and seven forty. Uh, actually, the number it steadily climbs between seven and nine. So there isn't really a peak there. I mean, it's steady between those two hours. Okay. So there's no big rush at a given point in time during those that window. Correct. It's pretty steady. Okay. Uh, back to the other, Eric. Uh, can you, you mentioned a retaining wall around the parking lot. Can you go into that a little bit? Is it the parking lot lower, higher? What, describe, is it around the entire parking lot? What's the proposal for that? Okay, and again, this is this is preliminary. This was earlier this week. Sure. Um, right now, it's it's along, if you will, the western edge of the parking lot and extending along the northern edge of the building, um, because the building, if you will, in that area, will be higher than the parking lot. Now, all slopes and all grades will be ADA compliant. Um, we do have sidewalks around the building and, and that type of thing. And so we wanted to avoid having the need for steps and all of that for safety and easy egress and ease of maintenance and all of those things. So, so we'll have additional details, but right now, uh, because of the difference in grade across the slope between Sovereign Drive and Penweb, 
Mm -hmm. We need to pick the midpoint, if you will. Um, and then we want the interior of the building to be flat. <laughs> um, Why? Because uh, I'm an engineer. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, it is what it is. Uh, you know, and then, we'll, again, we'll have all the details with the exact height of the wall and, and that type of thing. But uh, at this point, uh, last week we didn't have it. This week we realized we needed it. So I don't have much more detail. Okay. All right, so that would be forthcoming in the yes, certainly uh, submittals. All right, any other questions from the board? Uh, I have just what, what, what we'd like, Alan Rosenberg, oh, you know, yeah. to talk about the building. <laughs> Great, he's been waiting. Yeah, let's have uh, Bill ask you some. Sure. I, what's the earliest the employees would arrive in the morning? Typically between six and six fifteen. Six and six fifteen. Okay. So in essence, you're open from six to seven p.m. Well, uh, there's also going to be a cleaner that comes in after hours. Okay. So at six thirty, once the children leave, then the cleaner would come in and clean the building, okay. and they're there for about uh, four hours a night. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, Alan, you're up. Good evening. I'm Alan Rosignol. I'm uh, the architect with Edge Architecture. We're the architect for uh, Eric Graff and Katopia. Um, I just wanted to give you an overview of the building. Um, the building is situated uh, and oriented along the, the axes of the site, and we want to address both uh, Creek Street as the business front, um, and we also understood that Penn Web leads back to the uh, residential neighborhood. So when we took into account design, uh, we want to think about those two things. Um, so as we address Creek Street and also the scale of Creek Street, um, if you look at the um, front elevation, which would be the west elevation um, on your drawings, the concept you, there is, is really to break down the size of, and scale of the building. Do you have any uh, elevations that could be put up on the board so that they could go yep. on uh, TV? And sure. for the audience, maybe I possibly put this one up. Yeah, I have that one. Here. Okay. Thanks. So elevationally, this front here is what we consider the front of the building on Creek Street, but there's also a front on Penn Webb. So uh, we want to break up the size of the building um, on its overall width by um, creating different masses um, and bringing down the scale to the neighboring properties. Um, currently, the two neighboring properties, which I believe is insurance on the north and um, CDS to the south, are two very large um, pre-engineered buildings um, that span basically in similar size and scale to this building's overall width. Uh, but what we're doing is we're breaking that scale down into two components, sort of a left and a right, um, you might call it, um, and highlighting the fact that the entry is off and around to the side on PenWeb uh, with this glass enclosure. As Eric mentioned, the concept behind Katopia is that it's a learning center, um, and it's meant to represent sort of a high-tech and modern uh, feel to it, and um, that's the basis of the prototype of the design that's presented in front of you is to have that um, sense, but also um, to um, make, its, make its own presence and be a little bit playful as well. So as we go around the side on the pen web um, and, and addressing the elevation issue that you were asking about um, for the height of the building, pen web is the high side of the building. Uh, and the, the, it slopes off across the, si uh, across the site down to Soren or Sovereign Drive there. So the uh, retaining side is really the back side of the building, uh, which is also another front um, that we're addressing and will be a little bit taller by the nature of the site in the building. Um, so the main entrance is, is highlighted um, as we go along. And what we, we start to do is bring the scale of the building down. And one of your questions was, um, what are the covered structures? So the concept we had, um, this is obviously the gymnasium on the front corner, which we did because the scale of a gymnasium is larger, so we brought it to the Creek Street side, and we put the classrooms to the back as we address um, down Penweb and into the residential area a little bit more. Um, the concept was that we have these houses, the daycare houses or the 
the uh, student houses. And the idea was to create these smaller scales once again um, that are in the covered roofs are like the porches of houses was the idea. Um, and in fact, each of the rooms has a door to the exterior uh, required by um, code. But uh, we're also doing some small plantings there. And being the south side of the building is actually functional um, to the building uh, for sun shading and also to allow the students to be outdoors um, in a shaded area. We kept that repetition moving down um, to, uh, and covering the playground area uh, for its obvious impact for sun shading, um, but also to soften the building as it works its way down into the site and then beyond uh, the playground um, into our retention pond is really the buffer that we see b between the um, zoning districts. Um, so as we bring the scale down, we address it with um, the roof structures as porches um, and also starting to pull the scale of the size of the building that's required for classrooms uh, to be more of a residential scale. On the uh, opposite side on Soren, which is the north elevation, uh, similar ideas. Um, and rep repeating the concept on the south side, uh, being the north side, we do not need the overhangs. Uh, we do not have the sun uh, that's driving into these spaces and overheating them. Um, but again, just creating these smaller divisions and scale uh, that works better um, for a residential feel uh, was our idea. So I I get the uh, idea for the residential feel. It's not really residential looking building. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I personally have an issue with that at all. Uh, can you describe the concept for the overall architecture and, and how that was thought up? Envision. Yeah, as I mentioned, imagine. you know the the concept of a it's a daycare facility, so it needs to resemble itself as distinctly different. It is not a uh, it is not a residence. It's not meant to be a residence. It is a uh, commercial building in many senses, but it's also a learning center. Um, so, see, the overall aesthetic is really to convey that sense of um, you know that you're coming to a school type of facility. Um, but it's also meant to be softened and it's not as large, it's not of the scale of a school facility either. Okay, so I, I think that what you just said about having it be similar to a school facility, you know, it's on a, some, a residential street. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of uh, people would like it to potentially look more like a residential building, uh, you know, maybe a commercial building that looks like a number of giant houses or something. And so I'm asking for your vision um, to basically explain that and you have to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Thank you for that. Will the windows have any tinting? I mean, they, they don't look like they're tinted at all in the in the uh, renderings. There'll be some. They'll be of a color. Uh, we try not to do mirrored glass for sure, and the new technologies in glass allow us to achieve solar shading within uh, glazing systems today without uh, what we traditionally knew of as the mirrored glass or the really dark dark mm -hmm. glass. So. We want some um, transparency into the building so that you can see what's happening in the building as well. Okay. And I'll send the board and have questions about the architecture. Okay. The, uh, just one question on the, uh, the business on the west side of the county. Is that Kitopia also, same name? No, it is not. To go by Would you order. share with that with us so we maybe could drive by and uh, <clears throat> the name is LMG Childcare. L 
LMG. Where in Greece is it? Where, where exactly? It is off of English Road. So this is a completely new concept, uh, different than from that design. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. All right, thank you for your presentation. Would anyone in the audience like to comment on this sketch plan? No one? Okay. Any other questions from the board? All set? Thank you for coming in. Well, thank uh, you. We'll see you all again soon, I hope. I, yes. I, you know, as a recap, I, I heard some questions about why the architecture was styled, and you'll want more information about traffic and uh, obviously the retaining wall and yeah, lighting all the other plans, cool things uh, that, that go along with site design. Um, we'll tell you all about the grading and the size of the piping and where it goes and water quality, all that stuff. But I didn't hear anything that would preclude us or discourage us uh, from moving forward uh, with the next step of uh, applying for the variances and then uh, proceeding to uh, design and coming back to you uh, hopefully in the relatively near future. Uh, is, is that, that's my understanding. I just wanna make sure yeah, I got the correct sense what of the we, What our process is, we will uh, reconvene in the back of the room at, after the public hearing portion of this meeting. Then we discuss all the applications that have uh, come before us and you'll get a letter in the next couple of weeks uh, with our observations. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you all. Thank Have you. Good evening. Okay, Zach, would you please read the second application? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, application number two. McMahon LaRue Associates, PC, 822 Holt Road, Webster, New York, 14580, on behalf of Fantuzo Family Brands, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 and 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan and conditional use permit approval for a new business office and to construct a new residential structure with associated site improvements on a total of 0 0.29 acres located at 1661 Empire Boulevard. The property is now, the property is now or formerly owned by Fantuzo Family Brands Incorporated and zoned LB. Application number 17P-0015, SBL number 093.19-1-23. Good evening, my name is Greg McMahon. I'm with McMahon LaRue. Also here tonight is Sam Fantuzo. Uh, the property owner and developer. Uh, we're here, well, let me first put up a... Uh, we're here tonight with our preliminary final application for improvements on this parcel located on the corner of Empire and Rossman. Uh, there is an existing house on this parcel uh, and an existing garage uh, that sits back here. Uh, the renovation of the house is already underway and if you've been by the site, I think you'll get a good visualization of the materials um, and the colors that will be incorporated into the um, garage slash residence that'll uh, hopefully be constructed behind this house. It's uh, their intention uh, to uh, convert the house entirely to offices where they'll be locating their business. They're currently at another location in Penfield and are uh, leasing and want to get into their own facility. So the existing house will, will be, uh, it's about two and a half floors of corporate offices for Fantuzo family brands, uh, their franchising operations, and so forth. Um, proposed in the rear of the lot, uh, encompassing the, the existing garage would be torn down, and there would be a two-story structure. Uh, as you can see on that rendering, uh, the first floor, the first uh, ground floor of that would be garage space, and the second floor would be uh, a home for uh, Sam and his family. Uh, they're interested in getting out of their current residence and, and locating here into uh, downsizing and uh, being closer to his business operations. So 
Uh, that is the purpose of the second building. Uh, there were uh, stormwater uh, concerns and we had to comply with town requirements. We've done that by a series of stormwater chambers which will discharge directly to a storm sewer. Uh, we've reduced the uh, current undeveloped or current condition flows uh, to below existing for the uh, new development. The existing entrance off of Empire Boulevard will be maintained. We've got one handicapped parking spot located right adjacent to the uh, office and right adjacent to the uh, handicap ramp into the building. Uh, traffic will also can flow around, uh, exit onto Rossman. There are six parking places uh, along the Rossman uh, road side of the building and then uh, parking for uh, employees uh, in the garage. We've complied with the parking requirements for both the family residents and for the um, business. There are variances uh, required for this. We've been before the zoning board actually uh, in two separate meetings. Um, as a result of those meetings, uh, we had downsized the size of that proposed garage apartment. And uh, I think at their last meeting, um, their consensus was that they'd like to hear from the planning board uh, and they'd be comfortable um, if the, you know, once they've heard back from the planning board, but we would hope that uh, the matter of variances could be resolved next Thursday night. There's no new lighting proposed on this site. Um, we're not floodlighting the parking lots or, or adding pole lighting. Um, the hours of operation are pretty much 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, it's strictly office for um, his business, um, there are very, very few visitors to the business, uh, occasional meetings, uh, sometimes uh, franchisees that would be coming in, but it's not a, <coughs> an in and out high traffic business. Um, we proposed um, a row of red cedars along the back of this to help block this from the neighbors. And I know some of the comments we've heard at zoning board meetings from the neighbors are, again, as I understood them, a lot of light from Empire Boulevard that goes back and hit some, some of the residents had issues. We feel that the construction of this building right here um, is going to go a long way to blocking a lot of that lighting along with uh, uh, the cedars that will be behind that. So we, we think from that standpoint, from lights from Empire Boulevard, that, that it will uh, be a better situation than is currently out there. Um, I think that's my brief summary for this. Um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions, and Sam's here if you have any questions regarding the, the business or how it's going to operate uh, or anything of that sort. Okay. So you don't intend to have any wall packs at all on the garage slash residence? No, they, would not, they wouldn't be wall packs. There would be typical, there's, there's, a, um, there's an entrance which would be their entrance into the garage uh, on this side. And it would have a typical light like you might have on your, uh, outside your door, your front door of your house. The residential scale. Residential scale. Um, and there, there may also be some little, little lights, you know, mounted on the face of the garage. And there would be doorway lights for the doors for the residents. Um, and a lot of that is, uh, you know, code type lighting, but they're they're going to be of, of residential scale. So nothing to illuminate the apron going into this large garage structure. No, not other than the the garage mounted lights, which are uh, again, I can't say specifically. They're probably going to be on um, uh, motion control. Some of them may be on a motion control basis. So. 
the town issued a letter after our uh, last public hearing on February 23rd, mm -hmm. and there were some some comments um, as a result of the public hearing and the subsequent workshop. Um, have all of those comments been addressed? We, and, and if so, do we have uh, a document that you can share with the board that that highlights what you've done to mitigate all of those issues? Uh, we we responded when we submitted the initial plans for planning board. We responded to the comments um, in writing. With those, uh, we subsequently received uh, PRC comments for the plans we submitted. Uh, we responded to those PRC comments and issued revised plans to the board or to the uh, staff. Uh, probably about two weeks ago, I think, um, addressing all of the PRC comments for the plans that you see in front of you right now. Okay, so I'm I'm referring specifically to the letter that was. Uh, actually sent by the, the town engineer subsequent to the uh, last public hearing in February. So I just want to make sure that uh, we, we don't seem to have anything in our file that, that indicates uh, a mitigation of all of these issues and I just want to make sure that we have that. One of those issues was lighting and photometrics. So now you're, you're telling us that you don't intend to have any um, site lighting other than just building mounted up down lights uh, by entry doors and, and things of that nature. So That's I think we can do away with that. But, you know, I just normally I'm just get looking a, for the, the date of the letter. Um, May 31st, um, we respond, and the following is our response to the letter from the town dated 22317. And that was a letter that was sent to the uh, town on May 31st and accompanied the original submittal for the planning board. Um, <clears throat> You want me, would you like me to go through this? No, I, I just want to... Uh, look on the, uh, application. Yeah, I've got applicant correspondence here. Um, He's, he's saying, I'm, I'm sorry, you said that was May? May 31st. May 31st. We're waiting for the uh, file to open. I'd be glad to let you see my copy of it. Here she comes. Okay. Okay, give me just a minute, please, if you would. Sure. We have other questions from the board while Jim's looking at that letter. I see on the sign um, yeah. there's a possible future tenant. Would there be another business in the front structure? Sam, you want to address that? <coughs> there isn't any intent for it immediately, but if, uh, if we don't use the offices, uh, we may lease out like one of these offices to like one of our food brokers or someone we do business with right now, like a bookkeeper or an accountant. Um, but right now we is not laid out for that. But when we did the sign design, that was suggested, so we went with it. Okay, so that would be that would be another business versus an apartment or a residential in that front building. Yes, it would be it would be someone associated to our current company. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So, you you might want to stay around Mr. Fantuzo for this, but um, so during our first hearing in February, Mr. Fantuzo um, explained that the purpose of the a large garage uh, was to store his um, private car collection. So 
in your response to the board here, you indicate that staff would utilize the proposed garage. A so, portion of it. A portion of it. So, you know, we just want to make sure that it's okay with, with Sam that, that staff is allowed to park their, their cars next to his car collection inside the garage. One of um, them is, he, he's staff and one of those will be, I'm sure will be his. Yeah. It's my okay. family, just, I'm not sure it works for him. Okay. So uh, that was one of our questions, whether there was adequate parking for guests and clients. And yeah, we, we feel that there is, there, there probably will be uh, very few, uh, overall in the normal course of business, very few cars on site. It's just an occasional, when some of the um, managers come in to, to meet, things like that, where, where it might bring a few cars in, but it's, it's a very low traffic operation. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm all set. Any other questions from the board? I just had a question about the, there's gonna be a driveway that goes along the, uh, from Empire all the way back to the new apartment in the garage, is yes, that correct? Yes, there's an exi existing driveway cut right here at the, I guess it would be the south corner of the property and it would come in and, and this, it would come in along the south side of the building and then wrap around um, and would- Go out, to, go out right. to Rossman? Right, and access the garage. And there's still enough room, even if you downsize the whole project, there's still gonna be enough room to get, what, one lane? Then get those cars in and out of the garage without any problems, huh? Yes, there's, I, there's plenty of room, plenty of room to, pull in and back out of the garage and, and there's not gonna there's no parking in here. So it's strictly gonna be, you know, there might might be somebody pulling through and but more than likely uh, there's no obstruction there for cars car movements. Now to the north, once if this is built, they're gonna tear down the old garage, you're gonna build the the new housing there. Just yes. to the north there's that retaining wall that's Faces the property right behind. Right, that's it's yeah, right. actually over right. on the adjoining parcel. Right. Yes, that's all going to come out. And no, no, the we're we're not. Uh, the retaining wall is is not his. That it belongs to the, the neighbor. That belongs the to the neighbor, and that's not being touched. Um, this will be it, basically at the top of the hill. There will be a, a row of uh, red cedars. Uh, planted along that uh, property line, and uh, that will be used as a uh, to grow a screen right through uh, along the back of the property. But that will be all basically up at the top. Uh, the, we're not nothing. Will that be built up more? I mean, because it was really, I mean, you know, no, it's it's, out there again today. It's, like, it's oh, uh, very very little change in grade out there. Huh. You okay, so. Uh, you, you, you drove by today? Yeah. So that, that current giant row of bushes that separates the back house is staying. It's, we're not touching that. We're not anywhere near that. Right. So that giant bush, uh, row of bushes is right around here where you can't even really see over it to see the house behind you. Uh -huh. We're going to add these, these new bushes here, but that is all staying. We're not touching that at all. We're, we may clean it up a little bit from our side and put some um, mulch and stuff like that, but it, it's that's not going to change the way it is um, at all. Yeah, it might help, you know, because you're going to be, how, how, how far do you think that's going to be, Sam, from uh, the property line in to the new structure goes? Um, um, it's 14, uh, the variance that we're requesting, um, uh, we're, we show that building at its closest point being 14 and a half feet from the rear property line. I'm pretty sure that row of hedges is right in between the wall and our property line. I think the, the person behind us may have um, planted that years ago. We could find out. I'm sure they're here, but that, that's that been there for a long time. We weren't planning on addressing it unless we're told to, because um, I think that helps right. with, with lighting and whatever. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'd like to open this up to the audience. Anyone from uh, the audience like to comment on this? Ma'am? 
on up, please, and introduce yourself with your name and address. So and I'm Kelly Vogt, and I live at 4 Rossman Drive, and I have pictures. So I'm going to hang these up and then give you guys some. Um, so the, it helps them. So this is lighting from my bedroom window. These first ones are right from my bedroom window when I talk about bright lights. These are from my living room window. And you see the Sunoco station. And all of these got brighter as soon as we knocked down all the trees. And then these are pictures of what my vision looks like right now. And there's a set of each of these. So um, these trees are going to help Barb, which is great, but it doesn't do anything for mine. So if we, so the first ones here, if you look, this is the, in these red lights are actually the tail lights of a, of a car that's at the stop sign up on the corner of Plank. And um, so you're on the north side of Rossman Drive. I am oh, just right across. I'm looking right at him. Like so, this is from my yard right here, and this is this is the new house. This is where the, the garage is. Okay, so there were bushes right here that he took down, and there were big trees that he took down. So all of this was blocked, and so this is and these bright lights are actually from the bank that's on the corner now, and like I said, these first two are my bedroom window. These two are around my living room window, so if you're sitting on my couch looking out the window, that's the Sunoco station that you can see in the Sunoco sign that's broad daylight. And then if you go down to these next two that are the daylight ones that show things, so he's got his house coming here. So if you sit again in my living room and look out and you have all the cars parked over here because this is where the parking lot's going to be, I'll be looking at parking lot on that side. So he's going to have his house, driveway, parking lot. So these trees and stuff are great for Barb and I'm happy for her because she'll get some sound barrier. But it's, again, because all of these are now knocked down, there's, it, like I said, it's really loud. You can hear traffic, you can hear all kinds of things and then bright lights in my bedroom window. So I just wanna make sure we understand this. The lights that you're seeing, you're not suggesting are from the activity on that property. You're seeing the lights beyond. Correct, but because he knocked down all the trees and everything that were there, all of these were blocked. And then when he knocked down the bushes and the trees that were originally on the property. So building this, I, I don't think is gonna block any of these lights that were there. But if he didn't build his house and just put some trees or barriers back up here, then all of those would be blocked again. Good. Re repeat what you said, if you wouldn't mind, uh, where you're suggesting barriers. Well, I, I don't, I, the problem is I don't know how to put barriers with what he's got, you know, what he knocked down. But like I said, there used to, right along here, there was a, just like the row of bushes that were on the back here, there was a, Barb, or um, Jean had a whole mind? row of bushes that were there and Do a fence mean? and trees. Would you mind possibly pointing that out on the, the site plan? It's so, hard. It's difficult for us to okay. see those photographs and. So where? Um, Your top left. I assume. So your this house. This is Rossman here. Okay, yeah, your so house. I'm here. I think is uh, above and to the left of the letter Ra, uh, right. R. Right. Right here. Correct. Okay. So right along here, there used to be a whole row of bushes, and then there were very mature oak trees on the lot, and so all of these bright lights were blocked. So then when he knocked them down, not only is the sound barrier gone, but the, the, now the bright lights. So building this house where it is, I still think because this is where the driveway is, the view is still gonna come and I still have all the bright lights that are there on top of the lights that he says he's not gonna have. But this, and you can't see, it's a little dark, but this is actually in the front picture, if you look at the one with the red lights, those are the lights that are on his building right now. So he does have lighting on the side of his building that shines down. It's a little hard, but up in the corner of the one with the red lights, that's a lighting on his, house, on the, his building. It's right now. And that's now my view from my living room window and bedroom window. Okay. 
Can you ask um, Mr. McMahon to come back? Um, sure. Mr. McMahon, do you mind come, coming back up? Thank, thank you. Would it be possible for, for you to do a line of sight exercise from the occupied space, not her lot, but the occupied space in her dwelling? Because it appears to me where she's, where she's placed her finger to the left of the letter R of the word Rossman, if that's where her lot is and her bedroom and living room are there, it would seem to me that the structure that the applicant is proposing would indeed block some of the light that she's seeing that's not created by the applicant but is environmental light from the highway beyond. Right. I mean, that is, that is possible. I mean, what we'd have to do is look at an aerial photo um, and, and position that house and, and as, you, as you draw. Now, I mean, is, is there, you know, one little, I'm not. Right, you know, but, you can, but we, you can do a, a vector point so that you can say that 60% of, of the field of vision might be blocked by his house or 20% or whatever it is. But well, something that might show. Yeah, you know, we have this overlaid on pictometry. I mean, it, it's, it, you know, it's a, probably a five minute exercise to, to take a big felt pen and draw some, draw some lines in there so you can see, you know, what, based on this, what portion of Empire Boulevard might be visible through this. You know, I, I don't I don't think that's that's really your burden because that's not something you're creating. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, think it would be nice for for the neighbors to see that mm -hmm. that in fact the improvements being proposed are going to block. I you know I can certainly provide Sam with that. I know he's already gone around to the neighbors with plans and a, and a letter to make them aware of, of what's going on over here and try and keep up the communications. But, I, you know, I can provide them with that. Okay. That's not a problem. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to jump in right now is that our, our property is really a, across the street from the hair zoo. And in this area right here, across from it, if you look on the map later in your, your uh, meeting, this is the hair zoo's parking lot. There's no house here. This is right here. From here over is the hair zoo. This is the hair zoo parking lot. This is the hair zoo. Her house, which is right here, will definitely be blocked by this building. If you look on a map, it's clear as could be that her house starts behind my property line, across the street though. So that her house, looking out her window, this beautiful new structure will be blocking any light from Empire Boulevard or anywhere else, and noise. Um, I'm, those trees, I'm sure, you know, the few times a year where there's leaves and all that may have helped, but, um, I think there was two trees there, but I just, I don't see the issue with noise or lighting to the neighbors. I think this will help. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience? Sure, sir. Would like to come up? Hi, uh, my name is Jim Carras. I'm at 8 Rossman Drive, um, the house immediately next to Kelly's who just spoke. Um, I'm kind of new to this sort of uh, venue, That's so okay. bear with me here. I will I'll do my best. Um, just relax. Gentleman who, uh, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> the gentleman who uh, discussed some of, the, some of the issues that have, I guess, been raised earlier uh, concerning drainage um, and putting in a row of trees, I think that's great if something like that goes through with this project. Um, I was a bit concerned about just the level of water that, that does kind of collect on, on several lots uh, as you go down the hill. Um, I guess my question was about the, the height of the trees that are going in. Are they gonna be like small little saplings that mature in 20 years or are they gonna There'll be, be a, substantial a, trees? Or we, we have a town landscape consultant who reviews There's that. There's a code for, for what has to go in. Okay, that's good to know. Um, but you brought up actually a good point that I wasn't even thinking about the hair zoo, if which you could is just address the board. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the hair zoo two, which is two lots over from where we live, there is a lot of noise from that parking lot, even you know down the hill a little bit. Um, so putting in a new parking lot 
you know, and more business. Um, I'm just wondering in, in terms of sound, what that's going to do for life on, on the street. I know Kelly talked about uh, the light, um, which we have certainly noticed as well. Um, I noticed the sound first before anything else. Um, the row of bushes was actually quite substantial that was there uh, sort of right along the street. Um, and that, that is really what blocked a lot of the, the light coming in from Empire Boulevard. There is also a light that um, after the renovations for the building went through that uh, I'm not sure if it goes off at night, but it's certainly on very, very late into the evening and it's quite bright. We get that in our kitchen. Um, it, it's just made life on our street a lot brighter and louder than it was before. Um, so, I mean, really a lot of my complaints I think were are with what has already been done and I don't know if there's a way to change that um, apart from not putting in the vast <laughs> uh, swath of pavement for, for parking spots along Rossman Drive. That could be replaced with more bushes which would I think greatly improve a lot of the problems that we're already dealing with. In terms of the new structure that he's talking about putting over here, that's not really where the light is coming from. I mean the light is coming from the gas station, the businesses over here um, across Empire Boulevard that go sort of this direction towards where we are. You got the hair zoo here, uh, Kelly's house is here, and then we're right here. So, you know, that light is coming past the building here. I don't think this is really going to make a difference to resolve any of that. But um, traffic, I'm not sure if having more parking spots here is going to make a difference. It's quite a perilous uh, turn if you have to turn left onto Empire from Rossman. And even turning right is quite difficult. There's a lot of traffic. There's a traffic light right here, so you have to time it just right if you're turning left. A lot of times you wait for about five minutes at the end of the street. And if there's a car ahead of you, that can be, you know, extended. But I, that's really about all I have. So just okay. wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this application? My name is Barbara DeChambeau and I live at... You, you can lower that if you'd like. My name is Barbara DeChambeau and I live at, live at 9 Rossman Drive. I'm here about the drainage. I'm, I just hope that it, you can do it right so that water doesn't come into my home and the garage and it's going, like I said, it goes under the garage now and I have a black wall in the basement. Even though they tried to fix it, it's not working. So I don't want any more of that happening. So um, that's my concern. And I hope you can correct the other things for my neighbors. They're very nice people. <laughs> Where's the water coming from now, ma'am? Well, when it rains hard, it comes down the hill, and um, it's come in my garage be because, well, I guess there's not enough uh, land there, you know, to absorb it. And it comes in the garage, and um, I go right into my kitchen. There's no step. And I've already been in the garage bailing, well, sweeping, I should say, to keep it out from coming into the house. And they put a sewer in at the end of the garage for the basement a while ago. And they put a, a sewer up above on the hill at the corner of the parking lot that's there now next to Mr. Uh, Fantuzzo's. But it's not working. It's not really where the water comes down. They put it in the garage, and the garage sticks out farther than the house, so it's still hitting the wall underneath. I don't know. But I just hope that can be resolved. So I the drainage system that's being proposed by the applicant's engineer will be reviewed by the town engineering department okay. to make sure that it's going to capture all of the stormwater runoff on this site so that it doesn't contribute to any excess stormwater that hits your property or any other adjacent property. 
I understand that, but I still got the problem with the other one. You put the sewer in there, and it's still coming at the at that wall. It didn't correct it, so that's why I'm worried about it happening, you know, again or something sure. going wrong. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to comment on this application? Okay. Any other comments from the board? Uh, do you have any final comments, uh, Mr. McMahon? No, I, I, I think we, you know, if there are no more questions, thank you for your okay. consideration. And uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And uh, we'll take a look at it. Thanks again. Zach, would you like to read the next item? Nice pictures. We have. Kelly, are these photos for us? Can we? Okay. I'll pass them down to. Next application Jennifer and Walter Strasburg, 274 Pert Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14622. Request under Chapter 250, Article 11-11.2 .11 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final subdivision approval for a two-lot subdivision of 3.9 acres within the Town of Penfield located at 2080 Watson Halbert Road. The property is now formally owned by Michael and Monica Quagliata and zoned RA2. Application number 17P-0016, SPL number 141.02-1-11. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Walter Strasburg. My wife Jennifer and I are applying for the subdivision of Jennifer's parents' property where we plan to construct our three bedroom home. The parcel is currently about 16 acres, just under four of which are in the Penfield. Um, half of the property, the remaining 12 acres approximately are in the Walworth half of the property. The upper portion, um, as I stated, is actually under four acres, so we are concurrently filing for an area variance and will be attending next week's um, Penfield zoning uh, meeting for hopefully an approval on that variance so we can subdivide off two acres for parcel one for um, any future construction by, um, by in-laws, whether it be father or, or brother-in-law. Our portion of the Penfield will be under two acres, so that's why we're going through the, the variance application. Um, with the zoning board. So I have received the commentary from the PRC. I reviewed that with uh, Mr. Valentine, Mr. O'Connor, and Mr. David last week. Um, there was also a resolution issued from the fire chief, which I believe you all have, in regards to the fire access road or our driveway and the required um, dimensions of the driveway, the loading class of the driveway, and the turnaround need of the fire truck, if it should ever need to come back. We will be including the updated um, dimensional info for the driveway in our future submission for, with the final plans. Um, we also have a preliminary egress and utility easement drafted that will also be updated to include the fire truck turnaround, which will be situated at this area approximately it'll be a t turnaround so it will serve both our property and any future property that would be developed in this half to satisfy the needs of the the fire access road um, the remainder of the comments um, again will also be addressed in the subsequent final submission of our um, subdivision plan okay uh Thank you for your presentation. You, portion of this project that's in the town of Penfield is basically the driveway, right? A majority of it is driveway and for our uh, parcel two portion of it, it will be our, our front yard. So there'll be no construction in the Penfield portion of uh, parcel two. Any construction on parcel one in the future will be on a RA2 compliant lot. This line here represents the line between Penfield line, right? and Walworth. So this three three point 
Do you mind introducing yourself? And I'm Mike for the Bugley record? out of Nine Anthony Circle, uh, Webster, New York. Okay. Um, I'm the owner of the property, and I I plan on subdividing it and divide it up between my son and my daughter. And the problem, obviously, is the R R A two acres. Well, 3.9 acres is what we have in, in Penfield. And if I could show you, the driveway is going to be subdivided <laughs> in half. 3.9, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the problem. Part of the 3.9 is the driveway. Okay. The, the property is going to be basically subdivided in half, 15 feet on each side, one goes right. once. So they have easement access all right. the time. And the lawyer's going to draw up something saying that that road will always be an easement for mm -hmm. whoever owns the properties. What we plan on doing is this parcel up here with the, this section here will be two acres. This section over here will be somewhat less than two acres. But be, because there's no access from any other <coughs> point to this property, if this parcel were sold, they couldn't subdivide it up because there's no other access to that property. Right. Okay. Okay. If you have any questions, I'll be available. All right. Does the uh, rest of the board have any questions? No. Anyone in the audience care to comment on this application? Okay. Yep. Thanks for uh, your presentation. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Nursinger, keep on reading. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I shall. <laughs> Final application uh, Nixon Peabody, 1300 Clinton Square, Rochester, New York, 14604, on behalf of Bell Atlantic Mobile Systems of Allentown Incorporated, doing business as Verizon Wireless. Request under Chapter 250, Articles 12-12.2 and 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan approval and expansion to a conditional use permit for the construction of an equipment shelter at an existing telecommunications facility with, with associated site improvements Thanks. on a total of 2.29 acres located at 1843 Empire Boulevard. The property is now formally owned by Jeffrey Rydell and Zone GB. Application number 17P-0017, SBL number 093.15-1-63. Go ahead, Nate. Thanks, Zach. <clears throat> My name is Nate Vanderwall. I'm with the uh, law firm of Nixon Peabody here this evening on behalf of v Verizon Wireless. The, uh, the applicant um, <clears throat> connection with this uh, somewhat smaller packet of materials than I'm used to uh, <laughs> uh, presenting on for these projects. Also here this evening is uh, Robert Wilson. He's with Pyramid. Uh, he is the acquisition consultant, uh, real estate consultant engaged by Verizon in connection with this and, and many other projects. Um, just, just quickly, I, I distributed to you here at the outset a, an updated or revised site plan set. There are no changes uh, to the, the project. Um, it was updated based on one comment, which I'll, I can refer to later, about uh, questioning the proposed grading um, at the rear of the compound in the area of the new uh, <coughs> shelter that's proposed. And um, <coughs> the site engineer uh, reviewed that and determined there will be uh, no changes uh, to, the to the existing grading as the uh <coughs> um, excuse me, the shelter is being designed um, for piers. Um, so there's a note added to uh, sheet C2B that just reflects that. Uh, but we wanted to have the board to have the most updated uh, plans to account for that comment. And, and the new plans are in color. And they're in color. We've got a, a new high-tech uh, <laughs> copier printer scanner and uh, want to give it a test. So Thank you. it looks sharp. <clears throat> but uh, just re real quickly, um, as, this, as this board um, is, is aware, we've been uh, in front of this board several times in connection with uh, projects in, uh, in uh, Verizon Wireless's uh, wireless network. <clears throat> it's an, it's an ever-evolving 
technology. You know, the network is always is always changing, and Verizon's uh, job, its mandate as an FCC licensee, is to keep up uh, with these advancements. <clears throat> One uh, recent change uh, and a and a fast moving change is the. Uh, movement to the what they call centralized radio access network architecture. Um, it's, it's detailed in some with some specificity in, in Exhibit B to that application. I'm just going to highlight, you know, real surface level what's going on here. Um, most notably in areas where there is dense <coughs> usage on the network, um, which results in numerous sites um, to provide that coverage and that capacity we've talked about before. It's voice, but equally important and even more important now, the data usage on the network. There are numerous sites to meet that demand. With each site, um, <clears throat> including these small cell or micro sites, which we've, uh, micro cell sites, we've been in front of this board before recently, come, um, you know, cell interference, cell edge interference as between each grid that, that, that a site serves. So every time you're moving from one site uh, to another, uh, there is interference there. Interference can cause a drag on the network and decrease efficiency and throughput uh, within the network. Um, <clears throat> what this CRAN architecture is designed to do is to remove uh, that interference. Uh, there's a nice uh, exhibit and <clears throat> figure one to exhibit B uh, to your application, which in a simple way shows what's going on here. It's taking the uh, it's taking the processing um, equipment away from each individual site or the responsibility of the processing at each individual site and centralizing that within one main hub. So this one main hub will serve any number of sites. Um, it, it varies from site to site depending on location, depending on what the need is uh, within the area it's serving. What that does is it maximizes efficiency within the network, it increases the data throughput uh, with it from those sites, improves reliability uh, within the network. <clears throat> it also has the benefit of uh, minimizing the power consumption as the radio and processing equipment is being reduced to, to one site. Again, you see this er in most commonly in areas where there's dense usage, such as the town of Penfield and the surrounding areas. Similar projects have already been completed and Gates, Greece, Arondicoit, a couple in the city of Rochester, one's ongoing in, in the town of Pittsford right now. Areas, uh, populated areas where there is high concentration of, of usage. So uh, that need was, was, uh, was found, was identified in, in this area. Um, <clears throat> and with that need identified, it was time to look where can we, where can we site this, this CRAN hub? Uh, where can it, where is it best located, sited to be able to uh, service and provide that centralized uh, support uh, for uh, the number of sites serving the area. Uh, routinely, uh, Verizon will look at where there have existing macro sites. Um, for obvious reasons, they have existing land control. There's lease parcels in place. Um, oftentimes, it's where they're the usage, where they're seeing usage, uh, which is was is uh, Important for siting purposes that has a, oftentimes has an existing uh, fiber uh, lines in place, fiber runs in place, and it's easily accessible. Uh, in this case, uh, in examining all the potential locations, they did find the existing uh, Bay and Empire uh, site uh, at 1843 Empire, Empire Boulevard. And after uh, reviewing numerous configurations um, of the space, determined that they could locate uh, this new CRAN hub, the shelter within the existing lease parcel without having to uh, amend their uh, existing lease with the landowner. We're able to fit this additional shelter in there um, and meet all the, the technical and logistics that are required for this addition. Uh, so that is the uh, proposed uh, projects that, that is in front of you uh, this evening. <clears throat> um, at the time this project was discussed with the town, um, we were advised that it would, it would need a site plan review and approval and modification of the existing conditional use permit um, from this board, hence this application. Uh, after it was submitted, uh, we learned that uh, certain or one or more area variants would be required given the location of the new shelter and various setbacks. Uh, that application will be timely submitted uh, to the town for consideration by uh, the zoning board uh, for those, for those <coughs> setback variances.
Um, addressing a few of the comments that we have received uh, from the PRC in connection with this, the site plan. Again, um, question as to the proposed grading uh, at the rear of the compound location of new shelter. I've, I've addressed that. Um, and that's <clears throat> um, a comment added to sheet C2B of the site plan indicating there will be uh, no proposed grading associated with this project. It will remain as is. The shelter will be uh, mounted on concrete piers, um, <clears throat> so require no um, change in the existing grade. Um, why the shed cannot be located elsewhere on the site where a setback variance is not required, that will obviously be addressed as part of the, the variance, but um, <clears throat> as has been addressed, or as been as depicted, and I'm not sure if this board has a copy of this, I can provide it to the board. Again, Several configurations were examined on where this, this 12 by 30 shelter could be, um, could be situated um, and it was determined that this, the way it is uh, proposed in the existing site plan uh, was the most appropriate is within the uh, existing lease parcel. It does require an, uh, um, an expansion of the fence compound, uh, roughly eight feet um, in width or, or depth and approximately 10 feet in, in width um, to account for this, uh, uh, both the new equipment uh, shelter, 12 by 30, as well as a new propane tank and a, a new generator, which are required to service um, <clears throat> the new shelter. Um, but uh, w the way it could be situated, it would not interfere with the existing uh, utilities at the site, the existing equipment that's within that fenced in compound and that is why uh, it's proposed in, it, in its current location. Um, the question is uh, requesting util uh, New York Department of Transportation uh, permitting. Uh, the, the fiber line that will need to be run, it's a secondary fiber line in this case. These cran hub sites, given that they support numerous facilities, require both a primary and a backup uh, fiber uh, back on the site that has been um, contracted out to uh, Lighthouse or Light Tower, uh, excuse me. And as part of that agreement, they are responsible uh, for obtaining any necessary um, DOT permits uh, for purposes of running that uh, fiber uh, for fiber line. So um, certainly that's my uh, presentation. Certainly happy uh, to answer any questions this board has, hopefully between Robert and I, we can we can do so. Okay, thank you. Bob, you have sure. I'll start off. Uh, Nate, I had a few questions. The setback variance. What are you asking for on the uh, variance for that <coughs> rear setback? Uh, my understanding is the uh, it's a, a setback distance from a residential a resident a residence. Um, as well as a rear lot line. Right. Um, Nate, I can, I can answer that okay. for you as I, I spoke to Rob about right, it recently. Um, the area variance is for uh, a less setback to the rear property line, which is required at 30 feet, as well as a 100-foot uh, buffer to a residential zoning district to the property that's zoned GB. Um, so they're looking for both of those elements um, to the rear property line because of the improvements that are being proposed. Something we, we would have went through a similar um, variance review <coughs> during the original construction of the facility, mm -hmm. at least with respect to the 100 foot buffer. The 100 foot buffer. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to, to clarify then for the, for the new structure, what would be that distance to the north property line? Do you know if this revised site plan is uh, shown that? I, Nate, I am not a, I'm not aware, and it does not, it does not appear to. That's something we'll have to look into, Bob. Okay. Okay. So the the proposed uh, new structure you said would be on piers, um, to accommodate that slope. So the, call it first floor elevation of that structure would be 
at the same grade as the existing structure. Um, yep. That's correct, approximately. Robert, okay. you want to come up here? Yes, uh, approximately, yes. Okay. They're approximately the same type of uh, equipment building that's already there, very similar. So the, the fencing. Uh, Robert Wilson, I'm a real estate contractor for Verizon Wireless. Thank Your you. Address, please. Andrew. 6615 Towpath Road, East Syracuse, New York, 13057. Thanks. Thank you. So the fencing, um, you indicated that the fencing would have to um, be expanded to take in the new structure. So that fencing, I would imagine, would start at grade at the piers and end up at the same height as the existing fence. In other words, the area, the area under the new structure that's on piers would be fenced in. So the overall top height of the fence would be, remain the same, is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. Um, I would assume so. Yeah. That's correct. But yeah. then on the north part of the property, that fence would go all the way down to existing grade. Yeah, they wouldn't want a big gap at the bottom of it. I, I, I would say they wouldn't want. A, yeah, because it's it. okay. Yeah. yeah, looking looking at the site, I guess I'd like to understand why the the proposed structure couldn't be to the south, um, still behind the existing wooden fence, which. I assume was there as kind of a visual buffer. Because looking at the site, it looks like there would be enough space between that buffer fence and where the existing structure is. Um, see. So basically shifting the shelter to the south or also rotating it? just shifting it instead of north of the existing, it would be south of the existing. Now I know that would probably alter the lease footprint, but I think it would be. Ideally what they were trying to do there was leave an open spot next to the tower for a future co-locator. Uh, because this project does not involve any antennas or anything really to do with the actual tower structure, mm -hmm. um, they're kind of, uh, we wanted to leave that area somewhat available for a future co-locator um, that would be installing equipment on the tower. So the, the cable runs from the equipment would be shorter uh, over to the tower and then up, up the tower to the equipment on the tower. So that's really a, a prime real estate spot right there, uh, just south to where we are currently proposing the shelter uh, for a future co-locator that would be installing equipment on the tower. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and you answered my other question. Right now, the the, the physical yep. antenna configuration would not <clears throat> change. No, nope, we're not touching the tower. Can I can I interrupt you for a sure? Time? So, if I'm not mistaken, the the question was putting this on the east side. On the south. Uh, just basically. East. Sliding it south oh. towards the back corner this of the compound. This north. Okay. This way is so north is here, mm. and and let's call it on the west side of that existing structure, right? Between Correct. Charlie's and the existing structure. And so if you put it on the east yeah. side, what you're saying is that you don't want to do that because of co-location no. issues. Uh, no, I, when I, it looks I like it'd be the exact same. Oh, so you're saying putting the, the proposed shelter on the east, to the east of the it existing building? It would be building? between the existing structure and that buffer fence. So it would be between okay. the existing okay. so structure. that's more on the east to moving into the east side. Yeah, and Charlie's. Yeah, so the problem there is that's an existing, uh, so the lease area, you can see the, the dotted line is the compound lease area. And then the driveway is, is a, an access and utility easement area. So. Mm -hmm. By putting the shelter <coughs> on the east side of the existing shelter, you'd have we would to renegotiate. It would be blocking the road. We wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't have the turnaround to turn the vehicle around. 
um, you know, that space is really for uh, access and utilities. Where's the vehicle okay. turnaround now? Is that it's all grass yes. right now. You, if you look, uh, there's a dotted line that shows the lease area, yeah. the existing lease area. Yes. And then, and then you can see there's a driveway too to the east of that dotted line. So basically, the shelter would be sitting right in the in the driveway, and not in the compound lease area. Was the driveway pre-existing before you built this? Uh, from what I understand, this was all built when they built the initial site. Okay. All right, sorry to interrupt you. I can oh, reference no problem. I was getting question. my my orientation with uh, Empire kind of turned around. Sorry, I um, misunderstood. I thought you meant sliding it to the no, south in the no. corner there. It would be in okay. parallel with the existing. Okay. Um, and I think so the, the new generator would serve the new enclosure? Correct. Okay. And nothing would change with the existing enclosure that has a generator within the enclosure. Correct. Okay. So I think I was a little bit confused because I think the notes, the notes on the tanks. Yeah, the slight changes the are, are the, reversed. Yeah. Well, the new the new shelter is going to be serviced by the existing propane tank. The new shelter is going to be the primary. Um, you know, equipment at the site, it, and so therefore it's going to get the larger propane tank. The new propane tank in the north, okay, northwest corner will then service the existing shelter. If that makes sense, if that We're maybe basically that, giving the thousand-gallon propane tank to the hub, mm -hmm. and then the proposed 500 tank is going to be for the existing shelter that's there. Macros. Okay. Yeah, it's probably just a detail that hasn't been modified, but it's showing the gas line from the existing tank going into the existing structure. Uh, yes, that, that would be revised to, okay. yeah. Okay. That would be an existing condition right now. Yeah. Is, that's okay. where the gas line is. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Any other questions? Jim, Terry? I'm good. Anyone in the audience like to comment on this application? No? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Now we have no further items on our agenda. We will call the uh, public hearing portion of this meeting closed. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Services has a minimum standard so many square feet per pupil. So if I have what fewer pupils? I'm sorry? He needs a variance because it's a 10,500 square foot building. Our quote is 8,000. 8,000. 8, so yes. he wants 126 kids. If well, he knocked it down yeah. like 95, would he need a variance? Well, so. Child part of the Z, the zoning thing. I, I remember when that you were on the planning board when we went through that. That's a um, I was on the liaison before that, and that was kind of a. Uh, well, in terms of creating those recommendations, it was really a general feeling of what seems to make sense for. The maximum size of a child care facility. Mm -hmm. That's probably yeah. Yeah, there's, there's I'm just a, saying a decade ago or more. There's a pro forma. And here. It was, it was a lot. I, I think really this issue is going to boil down to traffic. So they're they're trying to make a case for avoiding um, doing a TIS. Um, so 
I, I would suggest that your comments to them include giving us some of the information that we talked about this evening. Um, let, them, let them do some traffic counts at their existing facility and come back and give us some data. Now, they're not, they're not transportation engineers, but at, at least, you know, if they're forthright, it'll, it'll give us some idea of mm -hmm. what kind of density is there. Um, because Only I think that's going to... SRF? Well, they, they said that they intend to. They just don't want to have to do a full-blown... And they've already contacted them, and we, as staff, shared that was some of the concern uh, from the Penweb neighbors in the past. Um, was turning it out on the Creek Street and getting access out of the road. It's busy at those peak times already. Right. Now, what they're going to do now, if there's additional traffic, you know, that may well, cause additional concerns well, for them. That, they're they're proposing that the ingress is from the second curb cut in. So all these people are going to yeah, they're going to be making lefts across. Making traffic. lefts across. Why wouldn't they go in on South and Drive and come through and? I mean, I guess and, those and are the, things that we can talk about. And during the parents our, can access off of Sovereign Drive. I think their initial bus is bus. A public bus will not go down Sovereign Drive because it's a private drive. So that's why that's, they want two curb mm, cuts on Penwell Park because it's a publicly dedicated road. And that's an yeah. item I think we need to have clarified. Based on the previous floor plans that they submitted, they were showing ages of kids from, say, two to five. Now, at that age, you're not really showing too many buses, but from that presentation, it sounded like there'd be more buses than one coming to this site. So I think there has to be some clarification about what students or children would attend this um, and those that would need a bus service for these before and after school programs what's your expected count of buses as well we could ask them for a copy of their license application <laughs> with, with uh, uh, child and family services because that will tell uh, what age group they uh -huh. intend to cater to their license will limit them to different age groups mm -hmm. okay other comments? I was surprised no one was here from Penwood. Me too. It's telling. I am surprised John Decker wasn't here. We did send a postcard to every resident on Penweb as well, notifying them of this meeting as well as the typical sign posting on the property advertising the meeting as well, or at least that the property is under review. So we exceeded our normal normal advertisement limits yeah, is within 500 feet of the parcel. Uh, but just knowing that it could have potentially, or the appearance of an impact on right. Penweb, you wanted to share it with all the neighbors. And, but so when they get additional comments, you know, no, so they've watched the public hearing at home, we can right. you know, get additional feedback. Right. Building design? Any comments on the building design? I, I really don't have a, a problem with it. I, uh, I, I think the architecture is nice. It's certainly not residential, but it's 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 soft. It's got good coloring. It's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm it looks agreement. it looks very school like. If you go back to that last elevation where you have an area that's covered, I think to the on the yes. right side it looks very school like. So what, 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 what do we need? We need a tabling motion. Look at it. Yeah, we need to. Uh, like oh, he's looking at one of the first ones. <laughs> we need to send a letter. Yeah, that was that's since been updated to what? <laughs> well, similar. It's, I mean, it's very similar. We need to move to send a letter at 8:42 p.m. Right. So moved. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> I know. The thing that caught my eye was, or my ear was, the outdoor splash pad. I'd not heard of that before, and I don't know what the board's thoughts were on that. I don't necessarily have a problem. They could propose it. That's yeah, you just know before you know the they, they area. talked about an outdoor speaker at the town board last night. Um, you know, I think that's something. Again, so on. No, or just calling kids in from the outside so. yard, or Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You know, as a teacher, we need you in, you know, indoors. I think that's something we could look at in the future and ask for more information about. Uh, but just listening to that splash pad was something that I hadn't heard before. I'm sure we'll right. You're thinking that want some more details. The speaker would be uh, uh, w within um, hearing range of some of the neighbors? And might yeah, I mean, it would be directed towards the back. I mean, that's where the play area is. Obviously, there's going to be sounds of kids playing and everything else. But I think, you know, that's been one of the concerns in a lot of areas is, you know, with Jeremiah's or Baytown Plaza, right. the outdoor amplification. Yeah. 
yeah. of that. So I think that may be a, so let's ask him for a, a crucial, crucial element of what that is. And the but, the, but the difference is this is only going to be during the day and during yeah. the week. Yep, and that, I think that's just a clarification of that or some more detail on that when they come back, that what those limited hours are and you know what those potential noise sources and maybe the other besides traffic, maybe the other major concern of the neighbors. Okay. Like splash pad too would be a Department of Health issue. And you need details of that for sanitation. And, and maybe that's just an initial thought, but yeah, sure. Okay. We got it uh, moved and uh, seconded. Sorry, seconded. Uh, there was something. I did. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was getting elbowed. Please. <laughs> Hesky. Aye. Bastian? Aye. Bastian was second. Burton? Burton was Aye. Knauer? Uh, Aye. Tidings? Aye. Oh. Thomas and the fifth of Grey Goose, I think. That's what I heard <laughs> under my breath. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two. 1661 Empire Boulevard, Van Family Brands, office yes. building, residential structure. Um, I mean, you know what kind of light fixture is on the east side or the north side of that house currently that's causing, is it a residential type fixture? Is it something I actually even know. We can definitely go out and take a yep. look at it, whether that's just a misaligned yard flood light or something that. Says he doesn't have any floods. He says all they have is, is residential. Residential style. I also couldn't tell if that was an interpretation of the lighting coming from Empire that's now shooting through the property or from um, the floodlight off the back of the, the property. The, well, he, young the man that lives next right. to Kelly. He said right. it was off the newly renovated he building. It, you know, okay, because she, she referenced uh, an Eve light, a soffit light that was shining down that she captured in one of her photos. And I'm not sure. Let's see, that's Who's a, going where with what we can light. take a look at and see if there's an existing light glare from his building. Um, obviously, there's other concerns about you know the light beyond and what's coming right. out of the intersection. That part of that is you know it's unfortunate for those it's people. It's, it's, a, it's part of life and well, what happens. I mean, it's I mean, not his. Well, the, the one neighbor, she's a neighbor of Harrison. Next yeah. to Harrison. I mean. I've got to believe she gets more lights and things. Can you pull up an aerial there. map just to kind of get an idea of where the residents were? Back to the <coughs> lights on the site. The yeah. renderings show a number of wall sconce type fixtures up on the second floor of the office building. I don't know if those are actually proposed or not. Yeah, that's something I, that that's I, I, they well, almost well. look like they're just quick, quick. You know, just so maybe we can talk to them in. about. Um, but that'd be something <coughs> that I'd like to find <coughs> out Mike about yeah. that. I'm, you know, that was part uh, of our not that I request not for a lighting plan is yeah. to show. Right. Right. I mean, yes, the kids are not having parking lot lights. That's great, but you know, as Doug's pulled up, it is showing second floor wall sconces. Whether that's just decorative <laughs> items, but mm -hmm. you know, what's the intent of those? Are those sales guy trying to sell? If they're just washing the building itself, good for him. And that's part of why we asked for the lighting plan is to show what that is. If there's no, no light spillage, um, I don't, they, don't, they don't make fun of the TVs. No. Got yeah. yeah, a lot. But a little detail on what those are and that's you know, what the intent is versus a, a wall pack or something. Like that. <coughs> or a new floodlight that's going to you know, light up the you know, parking area and the intent to uh -huh. light it from there and they're getting additional glare from there. Okay. Drainage comments, we can address those. Yeah, and they're um, showing the underground storage on site. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to tie the downspouts from the buildings into that, um, as well as pick up the parking. So I think she'll see a, an improvement to that. Uh, right now, basically, the back of the lot just kind of falls off into her backyard, her side yard to the house. Oh, can you pull up the site plan with uh, the um, tanks there? So right now, everything just uh, obviously it flows west. The grade falls off to the west. Um, so she's getting the building and then the the parking that's there now and everything just kind of runs off the yard to the back, uh, collecting the downspouts of the building and taking everything into the stormwater facility and then directly to the actual catch basin out front. Uh, if you should see a betterment than what there is today. Mm -hmm. There are other concerns yeah. about water from Rossman as a 
separate from this. It's separate, so separate from this so project. There's no control. If something's coming down her driveway or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, if there's an excessive amount of rain and it's overtopping the catch basin, I mean, we can look at the structure, make sure, you know, there's no blockages it's or anything else. This year, are off. Some of the rain's just going yeah. down so heavy, it's, yeah. you know, it's hard to... Ground saturated, it's... I mean, we designed for a 10-year storm event um, with structures and piping, and some of the stuff just comes down so fast, it, you know, temporarily may exceed the you know, capacity of the, the catch basin or the piping. Right. Well, I think that the... Uh, the applicant's done pretty much everything that we've asked him to do um, and certainly seems uh, very willing to uh, to modify his his plans to accommodate the comments from the town and, and uh, yeah, to the to extent be possible yeah. mm -hmm. um, or, or reasonable. We should know that the zoning board did submit a letter to the planning board prior to this meeting regarding their thoughts and comments from their review process thus far. Um, would the board uh, be interested or supportive of issuing a letter back to the zoning board following this public hearing now, uh, mainly regarding the size of the structure um, that is proposed for the residents at the rear? It has been reduced since the zoning board first heard it. It's now shown at 46 by 46. Originally it was 50 by 52. Um, that did help alleviate the need for a lot coverage variance, so they are now looking at parking and setback variances for the property. Um, is the board supportive of uh, acknowledging those changes to the plans and is there any support for what's proposed as is so the zoning board can continue its review? I think we can. I, 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 I would think it's yeah, sure. I, I would agree with that. Can we take a, a vote on that and we'll capture kind of yeah, what I just said? Issue? <laughs> no. So, let's entertain a motion to write a letter to the zoning board. So moved. Second. Burton Bastion. Hetsky. Aye. Bastion. Aye. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That was a quick eye. Burton. Aye. Knauer. Aye. Tidings. Aye. The board also asked about a, basically a, a view. I'm just looking at the sketches here, of where that building comes out to. You know, if there's a quick sight line, is that something you, might do that. you know? I would find I, beneficial. I think, as you would say, to the building, at least from here, I think would block. A I don't of think it's there. anything that that uh, that we use uh, necessarily as part of our approval process. I, I wanted to show support to the community to show them that that we do take their comments seriously, and I'm hoping that the applicant has his engineer prepare a, a simple vector plan, submit it to the town, and then the town can share that uh, with the neighbors. Um, because I suspect that once he does that, he's going to show that the majority of that vector coming from the focal point of inside her home will be blocked by one or both of those structures. Um, and particularly the photos that she showed us where she could see some, some uh, uh, signage from out on Empire Boulevard. Uh, you know, in the distance. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that anymore. But right. Mm -hmm. well, it's certainly not his obligation to uh, to provide a visual barrier to uh, things beyond his sight. Back to the site plan, Doug. Terry, you had asked about um, kind of enhancing the buffer with the plantings. Um, these plantings that are shown, the red cedars, or red maples, red cedars, red cedar. Red cedar. tomato, tomato, no. Um, those have been added to the plan since uh, Bruce, our landscape consultant, has had, to take, has had a chance to look at them. This is the uh, revised plans with his comments accounted for. However, okay. you were kind of trying to see if there were any more opportunities on the site for enhanced landscaping elsewhere. Those are big trees. Um, yeah, I, you know, I thought if we could help. So. Yeah, they're planted at... Is it say five to six feet tall? They'd be planted at. Um, eight foot on center. Yep, like eight foot on center. center. Yep. So that's what the height they'd be upon installation. Um, I don't know, Mark. Is there an opportunity for any landscaping near that drainage facility underground to promote some more? I mean, that's something we. I mean, also we have Bruce look at. They should be in compliance with our street tree policy. Um, you know, could yeah. look at. You know, whether yeah, the can there be one right there at the east end of the yeah, you know, right right where the cursor is? And I don't know about there, but if you push it out just towards the right away a little bit, there's a power pole there. Maybe there's you know some 
Should I bring just up from where you are? Okay. Um, yeah, I think they think like up in here, if there's some opportunities for some plantings, you know, right along the right of way there, is there near to supplement? Okay, so we're going to point. I pointed for him, and then he can point where that is. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's something we can ask Bruce to look yeah, at it. Was, you know, if they have that vector plan mm -hmm. to make sure that most of that is, is taken care of. Um, you know, typically we look at a landscape plan around the building as well. Mm -hmm. um, he's done some renovations at the existing building, which looks nice. I don't know. That's proposed. You know, he's got some planting beds around the edge. Um, you know, we should ask for a little bit more detail of what you know what is in those planting beds. At least to, that's not going to solves the lighting issue, but at least the aesthetic issue of around the building. All right, sure. All right. I think that covers... Anything else? I think that covers most of the topics that were brought up this evening. Uh, with that in mind, we can take those comments that the board brought up and issue a tabling resolution, if you like. Yes. Sounds good. Does somebody want to table? Uh, we're going to move towards drafting an yeah. approval. Yeah. Oh. Can we start moving toward uh, drafting a resolution? And we've got you got a month before your next meeting. Thank if you. If they work through some of these issues, is the board supportive of moving towards a approval? Yeah, drafting an approval resolution, and then within the month, um, they'll go to the zoning board next week with your letter of support to the zoning board. They may take action and then come right. back at your August meeting. You know, with some of this additional stuff, additional landscaping. And it's important uh, to note the zoning board will meet before the planning board next month as well. Right. Depending on how they so the board issue be, their decision for this yeah, application. Prepared on it to August meeting to can take action at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Votes? We have a motion by motion. Cashin, yeah. second by Burton. Second. Or motion by Burton. Yeah. Okay. Penske? Aye. Askin? Aye. Burden? Aye. Power? Aye. Hiding? Aye. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right. The subdivision application, 2080 Watson Halbert. Uh, yeah, this is a unique application. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it does split the county line, so uh, the planning board in this, isn't, this instance yeah, is a. <laughs> is an involved agency at this point. Um, the lead is the town of Walworth. Their review, they have reviewed and completed their their seeker uh, portion of the application. They've granted a preliminary approval um, for the project because they're doing the site plan review and building permits. They will have a final hearing uh, in August for this application. But again, they have completed their seeker review. Um, the portion of this project that the board is reviewing is the subdivision of the land within the town of Penfield, which. As you said, less than four acres, therefore, to have two lots in the two acre zoning district, they need an area variance for smaller lot size. Um, that smaller lot size is shown on the lot two on the map, which is where everything's being proposed for the development. Um, while lot one would be undeveloped, uh, would be compliant with the zoning district. Um, didn't hear too many questions during the public hearing. It is a basic subdivision uh, review of the land just to split it and with uh, associated improvements for the driveway. The driveway is being reviewed by engineering and the fire marshal. They've issued those comments. The applicant stated they're, they're making the necessary changes to the like driveway. You don't like the attorney rickety as Mark? <laughs> a little tight for, for a truck to turn around and just working on some of the, the uh, and, and I think part of the response from them is going to be to put a stub on the Right portion there. of lot yeah. one that's okay. going to go well, that, north. That qualifies as a T turn right there. It'll create Correct. a future stub for the future lots with the benefit to them, but so it also yeah. accommodates the fire part of this Just the driveway. The creation of two lots. So we have to still approve this? A subdivision of land. Even though most of it's in Walworth? Yeah. Correct. We're subdividing. Subdividing. Okay. Okay. So you got to think of this as two tax account parcels right okay. now. Yeah. Because okay. that county division, and technically they're going to be creating <coughs> more at the end of this. Okay. So we're doing a one to two for the 3.9 acres of the total holdings yeah, okay. um, within the town of Penfield. So uh, because the town of Walworth has completed the seeker review at this point, we received that information earlier this week. We provided the draft approval resolution template and the draft EAF for the board's considerations. 
based on your discussion tonight. I'd like to move to approve. Yeah. You know, allow me to sign the EAF. I'll second. Pass. Peace, I'll add is just had a condition, and I'm sure Zach already put it in there. It's conditioned upon the zoning board yeah. granting the yeah. Yeah, reduced lot size. The EAF, though, right? Yes, oh, I'm just right. voting on you did that piece, and sorry, I'll let you take the vote. And then <laughs> Next one. Shut out of my seat. Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tiding? Aye. Okay. So, uh, Yes, as Mark was saying, the, the approval of the board tonight would be conditional upon both the zoning board's right. approval of the area variance and the town of Walworth as the agency, their ultimate approval, final approval of the site plan and subdivision for their portion of this. So, based on that, I move to approve. Okay, second. Second by Burton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hetsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Last one. Okay. It's Horizon Equipment Shed. Uh, you get those revised plans this evening. Uh, it's the first time we knew they were coming, but this is the first time we saw them today. Um, staff's biggest concern leading into the meeting before these plans were submitted was um, any grading that would be necessary for the installation of that equipment shed in what was already a relatively steep area, uh, also being closer to the county parklands. Uh, that they responded by saying that the equipment shed will now be installed on concrete pilings um, shown on the plans. Uh, it is within the leased area, which is why they haven't proposed it any other location on the site. I think it was very good that um, the questions were asked for multiple locations on the site uh, where it could be and why it can't be from the responses. Um, uh, <coughs> something collected. No, it's, it's just not a shed. It's a new generator and a new pipe. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And a new shed. So there's three pieces to this. Mm -hmm. well, so these are, so these are equipment shelters. Right. Yeah. It's a they concrete a bunker. Head, like, when the county upgraded the 911 emergency communications program um, and put that new uh, uh, call center out at the airport, they built 17 of these, okay. um, complete with towers. So this is this is um, state of the art communications equipment shelter. They're putting these up all over the country. Um, so where they used to have uh, a lot of equipment in just these little sheds, mm -hmm. um, or they used to have <coughs> some of the equipment on towers is now located inside all of these uh, equipment shelters that are precast, they're concrete, they're designed for this. They pick them up, they, they yeah, put them that's in place. what the existing one is that's on site is like. Yeah. So we, we should have no trouble. With what about too? buffering or anything on that? Yeah, but well, County well, Parkland well, behind, so there's no one directly behind it. Our yeah. biggest concern, as Zach said, was just the, the grade of everything. And we went they had that, to fill out. Improve that tower. <coughs> yeah, there's, there's a high wooden fence. There's a buffer <coughs> fence there, although <coughs> part, we should we probably just had know. This application a couple years right. ago. So it was in 13. 2014. The fence does need to be repaired. The one end is falling down. Other comments that I heard too were revising the site plan to show gas utilities, the gas lines with I think I, plan it was it was red that was existing and they hadn't updated right. the changes. So we'll just so. get those notes updated. Yeah. And then um, also I thought it was good that you brought up the height of the fence. Will it be I'd six feet with the grade of the land or will it be brought up to be consistent with the existing one making it taller than six feet in the back? I'd like to see a cross section of that existing slope and the piers and the way that that's going to appear looking at it, I guess, from, from the, the end, from the end view, well, how just to see how it's going to be constructed. And how, you, how much protection is there for yeah. security to the shed with that fence? I mean, is the fence going to be here and the bottom of the shed's there? The bottom of the, where it's exposed underneath, that's all going to have to be fenced in as well. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they need a variance for a taller fence? Over six on that property? Do need to have a taller fence? Or is that the cross section would show you? Right. You still, you know, to get in there, you decide to get over it. Yeah. It's not, even though you might be able to see it, 
because he's taller. He's yeah, still, still, gonna, still six feet still high six feet on feet the west side. At grade. Um, but I think just a, a quick cross section of yeah. showing how the, how the piers are and everything else. That was, you know, yeah, I guess the biggest concern time. was if you're filling out, is that going to impact the park? Are we pushing grade that way? Do we need to retain a wall? And we're not. So, so put into the guy just put I just want to see how far, how far out the fence is going to be from the existing or from the new structure. Well, we don't need a section for that. That'll show that when they come back with the, with the final site plan. This is. So, oh, yeah. They have to revise this. Yeah, yeah. They acknowledge they're revising that. Yeah, they can provide a dimension on the yeah. between yeah, so we'll the fence see it. and it looks like five feet or something, whatever yeah. that yeah. distance is. The detail they're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other items that. Again, do you want to. Prep at for us? Yeah. Start an approval resolution provided they come back with this information at your August meeting. Yeah. You may be ready to make it. I'm agreeable to that. Uh, sure. Motion to approve based on well, or to prepare, we're gonna to table prepare table. Table. And get a Direct staff to start an approval resolution. And yeah. we're gonna ask for all the stuff that we just asked for. Right. In yep. the meantime, they have to submit an application for the zoning board's August meeting um, for those setback requirements. We'll get also we'll get a note on the site plan about that setback distance between the shed and the rear property line just to clarify that on the plan um, okay. which has triggered the variances. Would it be helpful for the zoning board to have a, a sounds like the planning board supportive of having the shed to the back um, which would reduce the rear setback variance does the board want to I think send uh, a letter or just leave it? We can copy the explanation answer. was okay why they want it to the west I don't like to use, I guess I do like to use the word ambivalent, uh, somewhat ambivalent on the location, but it doesn't mean, you know, oh, geez, there's a driveway there. That's not, a, to me, a, that plausible of an explanation as to the, the biggest reason why you can't put it on the east side. So I don't mind it on the west side, and I'm obviously one of five people. But if the zoning board has a different, you know, I think they need to take a look at it the same way we're taking a look at it. Can I include that in part yeah. of the, well, and I, I don't know for certain how I mean, much you of their own merits with the zoning board. Yes, it's right. just whether you're asking about it or not. I think, I think the way to do that is to send a letter to the zoning board telling them we either support the current location or we support an alternate location. And then if we okay. tell them we support where it is, then they'll. They'll act evaluate, it, yeah, right. you know, under the zoning ordinance. So, if you guys yeah. think it should be somewhere else, now's the time to say so. I'm okay with it. I am too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm chief. I'm fine with it. Was that a move to send a letter of support for the west side? Second. Oh, well, I can't no. <laughs> I asked the question. I have made a motion. I was just <laughs> send a letter to the zoning board as we discuss. It doesn't matter anymore, yeah. Mark. I'm going to be sleeping in AJ's garage tonight, so. Again. Again. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's, before we issue the tabling vote, let's do a vote for the letter of support to the ZBA. So we have a motion. We know so one of the two. I did the motion. Okay, motion. Second. Patsky. Aye. Bastian. Aye. Burton. Aye. Powell. Aye. Tidy. Aye. And now to table pending all items discussed, but Nate has a just want to get a standing ovation. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to quote how uh, this board and. and, and ZBA is going to handle seeker. Is, is there been a determination as to is type two or an unlist? Is there any determination with any of that regard? We've been uh, viewing it as an unlisted action. Okay, so will we will each agent, uh, board do their own uh, seeker determination? Yeah, you, we'll do the we'll complete the uh, EAF for well, this, board this lead portion. Agent. This, yeah, we'll this, lead this board will be lead agency. However, an EAF is typically submitted to both boards, right. and both are completed. With this board being the lead, sure. Yeah, and we submitted a you know EAF for the application. I would just request 
if, if you're going to do a coordinated review meeting, you'll be lead agency that you make that declaration tonight so the ZBA at their meeting can consent to that. Otherwise, I think we'd be pushing ourselves back a whole other set of meetings. Typically, our, and I know I've talked to Tom about this before, that the board's final resolution calls out that determination for the lead agency. Um, oftentimes, it's an unlisted, uncoordinated action um, when it comes to these types of reviews. And that would be fine too. Kind of how we, kind of how we treated the, the how the micro tower was also reviewed as well. Um, so typically, the board wouldn't have to declare anything tonight for the unlisted action um, because there hasn't been a need to go that far um, based on our review. So we just, everything, is, we the tabling resolution will acknowledge that seeker is still to be determined as the board is continuing to review the application that's in the tabling resolution. Um, the draft approval resolution will mention um, the part about the board's determination of unlisted action as the lead agency. Is that, so basically this board is, is a good? lead agency. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just wanted to avoid this hit scenario where they get, you know, the ZBA has to consent, and then you can't make a decision until they consent, and then well, they come back, and then they have to wait for you. Yeah, that doesn't. Well, I think it's easier if this board just accepts lead agency, and there's nobody else. That but also, if the board were to approve, if the board were to, were to approve this at the August meeting, the approval would be conditional upon zoning board's approval, on the, at, at mm -hmm. their meeting. But they're ahead of us, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Zoning board could issue an approval. So I think if conditional upon our final approval. planning board accepts lead agency on this application, the zoning board could act in August, and then you guys would <coughs> act a week later. And uh, I don't mind like accepting. So why, 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 why don't we right. just normally do it's that. after, but yeah. we're going to yeah. send them a letter. Yeah. Why don't we tell them in the letter? Condition on yeah. your Correct. your secret determination. Correct. So secret determination from the board this evening uh, is an unlisted Unless, action. Unlisted action. You're and we're lead agency. accepting lead agency and, status. And we'll, and we'll say that in our in our memo to the ZBA, so that they know that, so that when they act on it'll, the application. It'll be in right. a tabling resolution, and a tabling resolution will be attached. Fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Moved and seconded. I'm sorry, who moved it and who seconded? Uh, moved, so second. moved. And that was for the lead agency? Lead or? agency and the tabling resolution. Oh. Combo. Okay. Um, is that all right? Or do you, you know, chill? Make it work. Aye, aye. I hope so. <laughs> Bastion? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye, aye. Tidings? Aye, aye. See, we got three of them. I'm going to have to take another one. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Nate. All right. Zoning board got me. So the press Jim. The chairman. Okay. So the chairman. Okay. With uh, no other business, uh, we will adjourn. Have a great July. See you next month, people. <laughs> Tuesday meeting. <laughs>